Some people call it the deadliest tragedy in sports history. We are Marshall, from tragedy to triumph. It was November 14, 1970. That day would be the end of Marshall football as the fans knew it. That day after the loss to East Carolina, the team's charter plane would crash and kill all 75 people aboard the plane. There were boosters, players, coaches, and even fans aboard the plane. Here's the story about how Marshall University went from the biggest tragedy ever to national champs. On the day of the tragic crash, Marshall was scheduled to play East Carolina. This was just an average season for Marshall. They would lose to East Carolina 14-17. On the way home, the plane's altimeter was not working properly. Unfortunately, there was no way of knowing this from the cockpit of the plane. The plane would hit trees, causing it to be torn apart by the time it hit the ground. When the plane crashed, it started on fire and burned everything. Unfortunately, some of the bodies could not be identified, so they made a memorial where they buried these bodies. Now, every year on November 14th, we mourn the tragic loss of a great group of young individuals. After the 1970 tragedy, not many people wanted to bring the football team back. In fact, it took a player that hadn't been on the plane to go to a board meeting and bring it up with the board. As you can probably imagine, lots of people thought it would be better if they didn't bring the football team back because they thought it would be in the school's best interest if they still mourn the tragic accident. However, that was not everyone's thought. Some thought it would be a better way to get over the tragic plane crash was to get back on that football field and play the game. Nate Ruffin was one of those. He was a star defensive back that was suffering from a shoulder injury at the time of the game against East Carolina. He was not aboard the plane just like a few other upperclassmen suffering injuries and freshmen since at this time the NCAA would not allow freshmen to play. This would prove to be an issue as the Thundering Herd only had five players who were not freshmen. Marshall University would have to try to get a special approval from the National Collegiate Athletic Association to be allowed to play freshmen. They sent several letters to the board of directors but never received a response. This was about the time when Marshall thought about giving up on the program on their newly hired Jack Langle. This was a time when nothing simply was going in Marshall's favor. It seems as though the tragedy had gotten the best of the herd. But still, with all this happening, Donald Dedman, Jack Lingle, and some of the players refused to give up. Donald Dedman drove down to the NCAA headquarters to give it one last shot. In this conversation, he would tell them that if they would not allow Marshall use freshmen to field their team, the tragedy would win and it would ruin Marshall football forever. And with that conversation, Marshall football was born again. After the incident, everyone involved in fielding a team would be difficult. But as Red Dawson says in his book, A Coach in Progress, a lot of times you take a break from football program and it will never come back. Um so with that same thought in everyone's mind, they went after anyone and everyone they recruited. They even got a soccer player f to replace the kicker, and they even got a few basketball players to switch from the basketball team at Marshall. They also went after junior college athletes and did their best to get some of the top area athletes in West Virginia. They used the fact that these players could receive great playing time and possibly start on the varsity team unlike anywhere in the country. In the next 20 years up until 1992, there would be lots of things happening with the Marshall fo football team. They would get a new coach as Jack Lingle would retire after four seasons where he went 4-33. The school president was fired in 1971 because later on it was considered wrong by certain members of the board to have brought the football program back. Now looking back, you can see how big of a deal it is for the team to step on the field each game. The fact that each game they had a triumph no matter the score because the facts are no other football team had experienced what they experienced before. It was complete turnover throughout the program. This was a huge triumph in itself that they could even field a team. Toughness is a concept that is huge at Marshall. The toughness to compete each game and to keep your head up with every loss. I guess that makes sense though. I mean, after all the guys like Red Doss and Jack Lingle, as coaches, you might have to be tough to keep up with the program, with the constant wear and tear of the sport and just the thought of their those lost in the plane crash. Although they may not admit it, I for one would like to believe that without Red Dawson and the other members of the tough Marshall coaching staff, the program would have never peaked the way it did. Even throughout the 80s, the team had triumph. The fact that the team was even able to play games is just amazing. However, there is so much to talk about between the tragedy and their two national titles. As in 1988, they won the championship of the Southern Conference under head coach George Chomp. 
They were quite successful throughout the 1980s because they had players that had to be a key at Marshall. Toughness. Also, in 1988, the Marshall Thundering Herd made it all the way to the Division I AA quarterfinals. One of the less talked about triumphs of Marshall football history was hiring the great Jim Donnan to be the head coach for the team from 1990 to 1995. He was able to win several conference championships and one national title, and although Bob Pruitt won the title in 96, those players had almost all been recruited by Jim Donnan. During this time period, Marshall had some of their best players in school history, such as Chad Pennington, Randy Moss, Larry McLeod, John Wade, Troy Brown, known as Touchdown Troy because he scored once for every eight times he touched the football. They also had great players such as Billy Lyon and the incredibly talented and bruising tailback, Doug Chapman. These great players, who would all be amazing on their own, won and played at the same school throughout the glory years at Marshall. This year, the Thundering Herd were going to have a great season. They would have a record of 12-3, and led by head coach Jim Donnan and tailback Doug Chapman. They would defeat Youngstown State with a score of 31-28. to This triumph would put Marshall back on the map after the tragedy over 20 years ago. When Marshall was brought back, many wondered if they would ever be great again. But this year of triumph would prove that doubters wrong. Marshall University would go on to win two national championships in five years. This is a triumph few will ever achieve. The way that Marshall built this football program was incredible. In the year 1996, Marshall would win the national championship once again. They would be led by whom many thought to be the best receiver in the nation, Randy Moss. This year was a huge success as it was Marshall's second title in five years. They went 15-0 this year. They would play Montana University in the championship game and win. This triumphant victory would give hope for every year in the future because they knew if they could overcome a tragedy the scale of the one in 1970, they could win at all costs. There were players on this Marshall team that were definition of pure toughness, willing to work and be great at all costs. This is the main reason the team was so successful. These years because of the guys on their roster. They were able to recruit incredibly talented players like Randy Moss. They were actually able to recruit some of the top players in the nation these years. And since they were not the top division of football, they were able to dominate inferior competition. The incredible teams at Marshall have absolutely no fear. They reveled in their greatness. However, this has not stopped them from continuing to work as hard as they could to prove every doubt of the program wrong. People would say, when you watch Marshall, you feel like you can never take your eyes off the game. They would say, they are like a constant highlight reel. And these people were in no way wrong. They were one of college football's biggest powerhouses, even though they were a double-A school. The fact that they were so triumphant in just a short time, just a short 25 years after having almost lost their entire roster and coaching staff, is just incredible. We would like to thank you for watching our 2018-2019 documentary, We Are Marshall. Special thanks to Mr. Hart, Mr. Burrell, Mr. Derby, and Mrs. Perkins.